everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm back with project number three for this year's Mother's Day series. And as you can see, it's this very large, beautiful tote bag or bucket bag. It's gorgeous and I've absolutely enjoyed making this. So I've got this little chain here with a little envelope so you can pop a little message in there and this can be your you know little gift tag and then I've got this gorgeous bow and just with some velcro you open it up and inside you have a really large gift bag to stick that bit down there but yeah you've got a really large space so this fits loads in it's 12 inches high and it is let's just double check seven I think yes yeah, seven wide you can just see there and it's beautiful. Look at those papers. And I'll show you the paper pack in a moment. That great big bow there. It's just beautiful. And, you know, it. I think it'd be perfect for Mother's Day. You can fill this with so much stuff. And obviously it would work for many occasions anyway. It's just a lovely gift bag. Also, the straps here are two lots of 12 by 12 length cardstock. So this whole kind of strap here is, you know, around 24 um, inches so it actually does fit over your shoulders as well so it just shows how large this is it's absolutely beautiful so because I can't really hold it in frame there too much let me bring in what you need okay so these are the two paper packs now unfortunately the tops have been taken off because my mum wanted some stronger cards so she used it for another project so they are from the works in the UK and they were purchased about three weeks ago and we're now into the first week of March so around mid-February they should be in there I've looked online and I can't see these exact ones but if I just flick through here this is one of them and if I just bring up the prints there you can see just how soft beautiful colors really lovely flower designs um, you get two of each design 12 by 12 and they're three pound a pack so I do hope that you can get these because they are absolutely beautiful. Look at that one there with a the striped background. So this pad here is what I got this one from. So if you kind of really look at that print there, that's the one you want to look out for. And also it comes with those polka dots because I've used them, this polka dot paper and this stripe. Almost reminds me of like ice cream um, kind of, um, what was that called? You know, the ice cream men they used to wear those jackets anyway that's the one you want to go for for that one so yeah apologies i think it was by craft sensations and there's another one there on the back so another print that one there like the wild flowers there's that polka dot okay so again if i hold them there you can kind of maybe screenshot or something if you're on your phones so and then you can take it into the shop and see which one and there's that stripe which one matches up but that one is gorgeous and then the one for this one, which I just adore, the one I'm going to be making today, I'm going to use this print here. And isn't that beautiful? Again, if I just bring that up there, these are all the, um, what flower is this? Is it peony? I think it is a peony. And again, this is the paper pad. I think the easiest one that you will recognise is this one. Isn't that beautiful? So if you see the paper pad with this one, and you know that that's the other one I had again 12 by 12 was three pound and again I'll just flick through there's that one there which is slightly yeah different it's got more green in it this one here absolutely beautiful that one there with all the clouds you got the poppies there that's the polka dot that I've used I'm not sure what that is there not so keen on the cups I don't think that goes at all but anyway but look, look at that background as well that's really nice so yeah, so they're the two that I've used. So look for the one that's got pansies in it and that really large little, the big red roses, that one there. I think that's just a really, really stands out to me, that flower. Um, so yeah, have a little look, but they are from the works. Okay, so to make it, you need two pieces of 12 by 12. So I've got these two here, okay? Then you need for your base is separate. And this is a piece of six by six by nine okay so you want that then you'll need this is optional you may you might decide that you want to do your straps differently but there's one that I've already made okay so that's what we're going to be making and that's two pieces of 12 by 12 to make one strap so you'll need four pieces of one and a half by 12 okay so four pieces of that then for the closure you need a piece that's six by five 
and to make the little bit here, again optional, you'll need a piece that's six by four and a half. The closure for that is one and three quarters by three and a half. And then you will need four pieces or four circles that are three inches in diameter, roughly. I wouldn't go any smaller. I did try, um, I think it was a two and a half or a two and it just looked a bit lost. But if you've got three or, or higher, bigger, then that will work. And you want four circles and we're gonna make these corners here that are gonna go on the four corners of your bag. Okay, then I've got a bow. I've got some oval, um, a white oval die cut and a polka dot one and that's going to again go on the lid here to close it to give us this effect here. Okay, so we're going to create that. Then I've just got some chain. This is just from, I used to make jewellery, so I've got some broken chains that I've just put back together. And then I've got these brads here which are pretty much in every pound shop I'm a binning. So yeah, they're really, really nice. Got the pearl there and you can see there you've got your split pin on the back. So I'm gonna be using five of them, one for the pocket and then for the handles. I've got Velcro dots as well for the closure. So yeah, so that's everything you need. So we'll do some scoring. So for the base, you want to score along the six inch side or any side to be honest, you're just gonna score it one inch on all four sides. So one inch, one inch, one inch and one inch. Okay, fold and burnish all of those score lines. Okay, then that's your closure. So that's the five by six piece. Along the five inch side, you want to score at one inch. And again, fold and burnish. And then what I've gone and done is on the corners here is I've just rounded them off there with my corner punch. Okay, also our little pocket is a piece of four and a half by six. Along the four and a half inch side you want to score at half an inch and four. And then along the six inch side you want to score at three. Okay. And then these ones here you don't need to score. We're going to fold them freehand and then this is the little closure for your pocket. So along the one and three quarter side you want to score at half an inch. And again just fold and burnish. Okay, that's all the scoring done for the moment. We will be scoring those little circles here, but I'll do that when we get to it. Okay, so with our base piece, we just need to cut a few bits. So along the short inch side here, you just wanna cut up both of those uh, score lines. Okay, I forgot what I wanted to say there. Just like so, rotate it and do the same on the opposite end, okay, and then you just want to take little wedges off of the corners of the squares in each corner, like so, oh, dropped a little die there, something I'm going to work on later, and then again, okay, so that's now what we should have, so we've just taken little wedges off to make little tabs of these ones here. Now we're going to stick them down, so I'm just grabbing some glue, you just want to pop a thin layer, make sure you get as close to the score line as you can, because that's the corner of your box, bring it up and around, and stick that down. Okay, so I'll do it again on this one here, move that bit. Again, this is the 300 GSM Paper Mill Direct cardstock. It's just so strong and I'm using it in pretty much all my crafting at the moment. I think, you know, when you find that cardstock you love, it's just so strong and it's perfect for stamping. This is the smooth. You can get the just normal cardstock. So if you don't tend to do stamping, then maybe you don't need to get the smooth, but I've got the smooth so it works for both then. Okay, so that's one end there. So you just need to do that again on the other opposite end. Okay, so now you've got this base, which is just like a tray. Next, we want to pop some double-sided tape on this because we're going to be sticking the 12 by 12 paper to the outer sides of this. So I'm just going to, because this is an inch high, this is half inch tape, I can just go around and put two strips along here 
and know that I've covered all of it. If you don't have tape, then you can use wet glue. It will just take you a little bit longer to, obviously you have to hold it all there while it's drying, whereas with this tape, it's obviously in place straight away. So again, just going around the top part now, and I've covered that whole one inch surface on all the four sides. Just about, there we go. And if you flip it over, just with your bone folder, you can just go over. Just make sure that tape's really stuck down. It will slide around a little bit. Um, but you just want to make sure you've got all the air bubbles out because this is obviously really important that the sides stick because this is what's going to hold your bag together. Okay, like so. Next, you want to bring in one of your 12 by 12 pieces, okay? And what you want to do is you want to add double-sided tape. So again, this is the half inch tape. And you're going to add it across an inch in. So I'm going to do two strips. So that one. If you don't have this tape or you've got tape that is slightly larger than this but not quite an inch, just measure in, I'll just show you in a second. Also, I'll tell you what this one is, it's the Ultra Tape. I always get it in Hobbycraft, I think it's a pound. I love it, it's brilliant stuff. Um, I always go over and make sure you really stick it down, get all the air bubbles out. Yeah, if you don't have a tape that's wide enough, you need to make sure that you draw a pencil, a little pencil mark here at one inch and here at one inch, and then put the tape from that one inch down to this one inch. So don't worry if it maybe doesn't meet here, you could just put wet tape, um, wet glue, sorry, on those pieces. When I go to put it all together, it will make sense and you'll be able to see what's gonna work. So I'm just obviously ahead of myself in my mind of the steps that we're doing next, because this is gonna stick around the front here and along the sides, and then when we put that back piece on, it needs to stick down to this. Okay. Next, what you want to do is take your, I say that, we'll take the backing off in a moment. You want to sit this down. Now, this is seven inches wide. So, along here, you want to come in at two and a half inches on both sides. So, there's two and a half there, one, two, two and a half there. So, at two and a half and nine and a half. And you should have then a seven inch gap from this one to this one. So, we've got one two, three, four, five, six, seven. This will help you stick this down because you want to stick this side here between these pencil marks. It means then that you've got equal amounts that you're folding around to each side. So take your backing off of here or if you're using wet glue, add wet glue to just one side of this tray. Okay, I'm just going to help it along here because that wasn't coming off. So like I said, this project will work with wet glue, it just will take you a little bit longer because you'll have to wait for it to dry each time. Okay, so with your tray you want to make sure that you get it, the bottom of your tray lines up with the bottom of your cardstock. Okay, so pop one side down and then the other. I was going to put wet glue over that but I forgot that I'll do it on the other sides because I do think it just helps give it a little bit more strength. Use your bone folder again to go in there and make sure you've got all the air bubbles out and then I'm just going to come around this side and I'm going to add some wet glue over the top. This gives you extra strength but it also um, gives you that little bit of wiggle room if you need to you know, move it around. So now grab this piece and pull it around and stick it down. You don't need to score anything here, don't score anything because you don't want, there's no score lines going up the side of the bag, you see it just all curves around and that's part of the, the look so we don't want to add score lines to this. Again with my bone folder I'm just going to get right into the corner there of that tray. Don't worry if it's starting to kind of like I guess bow out a little bit or start to curve, it's fine. Once all the card stock's joined, it will, you know, go back to its kind of square shape or rectangle shape. Okay, so that's what you should have right now. And then you want to do the same on this side here. So again, I'm just going to add a little bit of double side um, wet glue and then bring this one up and around. Okay. 
do the same in this side here. Just get right into the corner there of the tray. Like so. So this is what you should now have this kind of shape. And you've got your double-sided tape there on both sides. Because what's going to happen now is this is going to stick down. And this will then become the front of your bag because these two sides here are going to go over this piece. Okay, so again, flip it over, mark with your ruler first. If you've got directional paper, make sure you're doing this at the bottom. So again, you want to come in at two and a half, one, two, two and a half. All that is is just, I think, a useful gauge for you to make sure you're getting it in the right place. And then it's going to be a bit harder for me filming now because you can't see so much, but I'm just doing exactly what we did at the beginning is lining that up like so. If you want to do hole punches, if you want to do handles and stuff like that, you would have to be doing it really before you stick it down, even at this early stage. So, because once the you know bags all together, it's quite hard um, to hole punch it. But um, again, watch the video and see what you want to do. Again, I didn't add wet glue because I totally forgot, but we'll do it on the side piece again. So, like so, and then we're going to take off our backing. On these two pieces here. Now I, I have made similar to this, I made one I think two years ago. I think it was in I think it was a gift bag week that I done. I'll link that up here for you anyway and you can check it out. So bring this over. Don't worry so much about the top for the minute. Get this all pulled round. Now it's actually just shy of an inch, so I've got a little bit of sticky show in there. So maybe just cover one and three quarters. I thought it was an inch, but anyway, as I pull it up, it's not going to matter too much because I can sort that out. You just want to keep this nice and straight so the tops completely marry up. If you are off, then you know that this isn't a straight line. That is your, your gauge. If that's completely nice and, you know, can, you know straight, <laughs> then you know you're okay. Flip it over. And just go in there and make sure that's really stuck down. Keep losing my little die there. Like so. Okay. And that's how it should look inside. So it's really, really neat inside and it's really neat on the outside as well. And again, we'll do the same on this side. In fact, the sticky's gone now. There's a little bit which I can get rid of. So yeah, so just cover this area, come in, don't come in by the inch that I said, come in by three quarters of an inch. Okay, again, take the backing off of here. Pop a bit of glue. This is quite a decorative project as well. So I think if you make stuff just because you enjoy making, this is just gonna look so pretty on your shelf in your craft space. So yeah, um, I think it's just really, really nice to make and to look at. So that's that one. And then again, come to the end here. Let it kind of fan out like that. See, I'm kind of pushing down because then wherever it naturally lines up, that's where you want to stick. Okay, so then pinch it, flip it over and it will all lie really flat and you won't get any buckling or anything. If you stick from the bottom up, the chances are that this this top part isn't going to be right whereas if you go from the top and kind of like I said squeeze it like that that shape then it'll be fine now when we go to squash it out this way you'll see you've got that kind of bit there just fold it in half pinch it like that again here just pinch it just the top and now you get that really cool very large gift bag and that print is just absolutely gorgeous beautiful beautiful and inside you've got a really nice neat little gift bag so I'm just going to go in there because I can see the glue's lifting just a little bit on the tray you want to make sure that the tray is stuck to all the sides and you'd be able to see, see now it's all stuck down so just check all that before you go on to the next stages okay so that's that done and then we can add our corners so these now it's all these bits that I, I enjoy doing. They kind of bring it all together. But look, just by adding them on, how cool does that look? So, you, like I said, you want four of those, which were three, three and a half. I'm going to have to pop that on the floor for a minute because I've got so much going on on my desk. Um, three and a half diameter. Oh, no, three, sorry. Three inch diameter. And then I'm going to grab a little scoreboard. And 
this one here, and you just want to score it halfway. So because it's a circle, pop it in. Whatever you've got, whatever your circle is, you want to score it half. So mine's three, so I'm scoring at one and a half, all right? Right, right through the middle. So if you've got a four inch um, circle, then you'd score it two. Then rotate it, and you want this line to be as straight as possible. So that's about right. I'm using my guide down here. I've got one and a half there, and it lines perfectly with that. And score again at one and a half, or whatever your half point is. So you'll have your crosses, or crossed, you'll have your cross through the center. Fold and burnish, and then you want to cut up one of them, just taking a little wedge out. So you can see there what I've just done. Okay. And then you're going to bring that down and that one over, creating that little corner. And this works for many things. I've done this in little trinket boxes that I've done to make decorative corners. It looks great if you're using like a mirrored cardstock, especially if you've got like a silver or something, because it obviously looks a little bit like it's more of a metal. And then just bring it around and stick that down. And again, always make sure you spread your glue out or whatever the adhesive is that you're using. And you need to do that four times so you have these four corners, okay? Then we can stick them down. So I add glue to both areas really. So on the bag, I add glue right into the corner, all this bit here, okay? And then on this, I add glue on the outer parts, okay? And obviously get in a little bit further there as well, but I'll just spread it with the side of my nozzle there. Like so. And with the join, so my join is here at the back, I'm going to pop that towards the back, okay? And then stick that down. All right. And just bring it up. See what I'm doing there? Kind of joining with the curve of the bag so you get a really nice join so you don't want to pinch it and continue this kind of fold here you just want it to kind of more go into the actual curve of the bag you see now where that's just all stuck down perfectly which is why it's good to put that glue on this piece and then also on the very corner there because you know it's all stuck down perfectly how lovely does that look now? It's a nice contrast. And obviously all those reds, all the colours go because they're from the same pack. So you just want to do that on all four corners. Okay, so there's the bottom. How lovely does that look? And again, when we fold that out, you can see how that's all going to look. Next we can do our closure, so you want that piece of, what was it, 6 by, check I've got the right piece, 6 by 5, yeah, and we've already scored and folded and I've already rounded off my corners there, and this is what again just really starts to transform it, look at that, by instantly adding it, it just looks really nice. So I am going to add some red double sided tape and a little bit of wet glue onto this. So you just want to cover the inside of that tab. The only thing, like I said, I'm a bit annoyed about with this one is all the other insides match perfectly. Like that complements this perfectly. That one works. But then you've got this random coffee cup and coffee beans with the polka dot and it's there's, got, there's no red in this whatsoever. Um, so it doesn't, you know, when you open this bag it is a bit random. So that's me being picky. But I'm sure whoever gets this one, the other one I know who's having, but this one, usually my friends buy them from me, so um, yeah, it will still look lovely. Okay, so again, I'm just going to pop a little bit of wet glue through that bit where I didn't quite cover it. And then I pop it inside here, and then make sure that you're getting it nice and centred. Actually, it doesn't really help you guys watching. You just want to line this up. See, it does help me doing it inside. You want to line it up. I'm going to do this end instead. Fold this down so it's in half. Like that. And you want to make sure that this is in the middle. Like 
like so. So this is going to be, so what's that? One, two and three quarters. Oh God. And two and a half. So it needs to go a little bit this way, and then I think we're there. That'll do. And there we go. Bring that side over. I can just spread that out. There we go. All right. So you saw how I done it. <laughs> just copy that. But that again looks so nice. Then I've got this piece here, which is going to go on top like that. Again, this is entirely up to you. You might just want to put some Velcro underneath that. You might want to do the big bow like I've done on other, the woven gift bag when I've done the bow coming through here. But I'm going to stick that one down over the top. So I'm just going to cover that half of this. Like so. And just open it up. Again, I'm trying to make sure I get you, get this all in. So about there. Just make sure that is straight. Like so the measurements of this, these are the Tonic Studios oval dies. The largest white one is four and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then the one on top is the next size down, which is four and a half by three and a half. Okay. So now when I bring that all down, look at that gorgeous okay let me just clear up a little bit okay so I've just got some velcro dots here and I'm just gonna grab a pair these are by the brand velcro these are a little bit bigger to what I usually use these ones are because I know they're all done in mil I think these are 18 mil I usually use 16 mil um, but I had these ones so I'm using them plus this is a big gift bag so pop your dot on that piece there. I think I'm going to cover that. I'm going to cover that with the polka dot here. I've got another bit I'm going to pop because that will bug me. <laughs> anyway, lie this down, bring it over and just make sure that that sits perfectly, which it does. And very carefully split them up. Oh the sticky bit there it's always a pain when you make a bag just go back over that there we go because you need to be able to obviously really stick it down but you can't until you open it again so now there we go perfect all right then we can make the handles so you will have four pieces and this is optional you may not choose to do this at all but you want to cover the, one of the ends an inch in so this is gingham stripe so I can see I just need to go up to that red stripe there because we need to join them together to make the long handles now you you may want to use ribbon that's you know totally fine and that will look just as lovely but I wanted to make these really long handles and I like that it can go over your shoulder it's just quite fun and then I'm going to sit that over the top and just give that a few minutes to really stick together Okay, while that's just drying, I'm going to go on and do this piece here. So we've already scored. This is the piece for the purse or the little pocket. And you just want to burnish, fold and burnish all of those lines. And then you've got your two score lines. This was your one and, what did I say it was? One and four inch score line. You want to cut down bottom ones like so just up to that center score line I know it's hard to see it on this gingham print but you just want to cut them away up to that middle score line okay so you've got now that shape okay and then just take little wedges off of the sides here like so a bit better and again, pop some tape on the tabs. Take off the backing, fold it over, fold in these sides, bring up that one. And that will give you your pocket. And then this one is the 
little closure so it's going to go over the top like so but I just want to round my edges off and that's the X cut corner punch and that's size L so it's got an L there you get small medium or large and again pop some red tape on your tab or sorry yeah on the tab part so the back bit okay And again, just line the back of this up with the top there. Fold that all over. And you've got a really nice little envelope now to pop a little message in. And then again, you just want to get a Velcro dot. I've got these smaller ones, again by the brand Velcro. These are even tinier. These are 10 mil. And just grab a pair, exactly the same way. Just stick that in there like so and then I've got these brads and what I'm going to do is cut the metal brad part or the split pin even off of the back and then I'm going to turn my hot glue gun on and I'm going to stick that down in the centre so it matches the other brads that I'll be using later but I'll do that shortly now we can go back to the straps okay so now what you want to do is fold it in half start from the middle Fold it perfectly in half, so you should have two three quarter inch sides. Use your bone folder just to keep that in place and then just follow it along. So just fold that in half because you don't want to score because we're not actually folding all the way to the end. So you're going to fold and leave. I'll tell you in a second. It's entirely up to you, there's no exact, it's just roughly. You want to fold up to about two inches. Okay, so leave two inches where you don't fold to the end. Okay, so I fold it up to there and you can see there it's about two inches from the end because that's what's going to form this design here. And again on this side, just go all the way down, making sure perfectly in half because you will see both sides of the handle so you don't want to see some of the inside print or design that you might have if you're using a double sided so again you do want to make sure whatever it is yeah you've got the same at both ends and then just go along and really make sure that's burnished well and also where you folded it and stuck it over because you've got a lot of card on the join there just make sure you kind of really fold it and break down all the fibers there like so okay and open it back up again and you want to pop glue just on one side all the way down to where you stopped folding okay and then fold that in half and just kind of hold it in place for a second and then again with your bone folder just go over and really make sure that all that glue spread out Okay, and again, just kind of work it into the shape that you want it to be. It will become really strong. You can see now the handles. So now we want to make it more like that at the ends. So what you want to do is pinch this together here and push this down. Okay, and push that. So you can see how I've created that. So kind of you start to get this like little triangle piece you want that to be completely flat with the bottom of this so you can lie your hand you can see now how that's going to stick down so again with this one pinch it and then push down and you want them to be the same so if they're slightly out then just trim it but I think I can get away with it I might take a little bit off of that one just a tiny again because I'm using lines here it's quite easy yeah there we go like so and then you should have two like this okay then we need to stick them down so again choose you might have one that you prefer more for the front I'm going to use the one I made originally add glue to the back and do one at a time you can use double sided tape as well but because this is big and it can hold heavier gifts I would use either a good strong wet glue, which this is, or use both, 
or if you've got a red tape or just a very very strong tape then that will be fine as well but yeah you just make sure it's something strong unless you're keeping it purely for decoration then it won't really matter and you just want to make sure you pop it in the middle from where this is to the end here so and the triangle part wants to line up with the top here so look I can fold it over see like so and then that is like a hinge just hold that there for a minute and you want to do this on all of your handles with your back ones when you stick it down make sure they line up with the one in front okay Okay, next we want to add our brads. This is optional, it's purely decorative, but it will also hold your straps in place. So I'm just going to open this up and just pop with my pokey tool just to hold through the center. And then with those same brads, just pop them through, split them open, and it just Gives it a nice little bit of decoration. So I'm going to do that on all of those. I'll just bring them up, you can see there just how nice they look. Okay, then we just need to finish this one here. Okay, so the last bits to do now are just to attach our little pocket or little purse part here so I've got this which is half an inch by two inches folded it in half I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue in between like so just let that dry I've got my big bow that I'd already prepared earlier and I'm going to stick this one right in the middle like so and again that just finishes the bag that looks absolutely gorgeous and bring it up a bit better there for you to see and now that that's all dry pop a little bit of glue on the bottom about a quarter of an inch and then i'm popping it just in the corner top left and it just acts as a little tab for you to be able to attach your brad or your um, eyelet, um, any little just hole punched hole, you don't have to use the eyelets on it if you don't want to, um, but I just thought it was nice doing it this way rather than actually putting a hole in anywhere on this actual pocket, so again, entirely up to you whether you even add this at all, but I just thought it was a nice little extra. So now I'm just going to pop a hole punch right in the centre, Grab this one here and squeeze that one, okay. And then I've got that brad that I cut earlier. Just pop some hot glue, stick that in the middle. Again, it just ties everything together, makes everything match. And then this is the chain that I've just got and I'm going to, I've just remembered I have to take this end off in order to feed it through there first. So I'll just have to squeeze this back together. Okay, and then this one I'm just popping around. The front one. It's just a little lobster clip um, clasp on the end there. And it just hangs down, like so. But how beautiful is that? Twist it around that way. There we go. It's hard to really get this in shot, but it's just so big. But it's just absolutely beautiful. So there's that one I like there. And then pop that in there. And this one. Oh, I will pop there. There we go. We can just get those bits in. But they just look beautiful and I think perfect for Mother's Day. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, a little bit longer than usual, but there's quite a lot to it. Um, it's a lovely project to do though, so when you've got a nice you know, afternoon free, definitely give it a go. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching and I'll be back again tomorrow. Bye.